And I was trying to work out what is the most important thing about eating a meal, because really what goes on behind the scenes is nothing to do with me, is it? What, what goes on in the kitchen? Is it the ambiance? Is it the service? Is it the cutlery? What, or is it everything? Well, I believe it is in every man, in, in everyone's mind what the perfect setting would be, and it might change from person to person. We obviously have uh, standards dictated by guides or uh, uh, publications that, uh, or uh, people that you know uh, give awards as to um, you know what kind of fine china you might have, or uh, whether you use uh, stainless steel or actual silverware, or uh, whether you use the best of glasses or uh, a more economical version. Um, so, to me, it has to be a, at least a combination of all factors. You know, you got to have a, a decent setting. I mean, the, the, the eye has to be placed. You can't be eating at a table without tablecloth and sawdust on the floor and, you know, pretend you're having a fine, uh, uh, you know, a fine meal. You can, add, you can definitely have a good meal. But, you know, something different than uh, spending a couple of hours at the table or three hours at the table and enjoying yourself. And, um, you know, company doesn't hurt. Obviously, uh, to have uh, um, a nice linen, you know, a, te a, a napkin that doesn't rub your uh, lips raw when you wipe your mouth. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, um, we like to think that what we do best is present our food and uh, we have a wide variety of uh, wines, a, a, an award-winning list, as a matter of fact, uh, to complement those, the, the very food. And um, so we try and uh, put a package together that is all-inclusive, even though we might not excel in any one category, if not for the wine and the food, of course. Now, you mentioned earlier you won awards for your wine list. You've also won awards for many other things as well. Just go through some of the awards that you've won for this restaurant. Well, locally we've won uh, the Epicurean Award for Best Italian Restaurant, uh, three years running, and um, we've been mentioned in, number of, in numerous uh, publications. Uh, uh, Wine Spectator, which is uh, a force to be reckoned with uh, in the States, uh, did a um, sort of a, um, I don't know, ranking of restaurants in town a couple of years ago and uh, you know we managed to actually show up uh, you know in second place behind uh, Julian Serrano and Picasso which is uh, you know James Beard award uh, a James Beard award winning chef which for the southwest which I actually happened to have won myself last year so um, I think you know we're not the newest kid on the block but if nothing else in the past 5 6 years we've uh, actually managed to um, accrue respectability and if nothing else uh, a certain uh, um, shall we say uh, aura as to be reliable uh, as to be a place where you can come and get a solid experience you know most times you know we have our dull moments <laughs> as as does everybody but chances are if you come to Valentino you'll be pleased with what we got to offer and you know if you're not pleased and you voice your uh, concerns then we always try our very best to rectify and make sure that you walk out of here a happy camper. You mentioned earlier that you've won one of the most highly regarded awards uh, in America really and why do you think that is? Is it because you're able to pick the best ingredients or because your skill for cooking is better than most? What, what is your skill that makes you award winning? Well. Um, just to rectify what you, what you just said, I just won uh, the regional, uh, re a regional award. The most prestigious award would be uh, to win Best Chef for the United States. And let's put it this way, I'm still working on that. Right. <laughs> so, you know, maybe in the years to come, who knows. Um, I believe it takes uh, a combination, like again, a combination of all factors. It takes a package. You can't just be a good cook. You can't be just uh, a good manager. You can't be just uh, good at any one thing. You've got to be a little bit, a little bit of everything, and um, you need to be doing it for for a while so that people get to notice you. You know the the. the uh, the restaurant business is uh, full of shooting stars and you know there might be somebody that will shine bright and visible for all of one year and then whoops where they go and uh, you know I think the key is to uh, be consistent and be uh, you know try and be at the top of your game for as long as you can which in this business is you know, kind of hard because you 
it does burn you out like no other business. I would imagine so because having seen programs on the TV, watching you guys work when you've got particularly a full restaurant, I mean, you never stop. You've got to be almost almost an athlete to keep up with the pace. I mean, to get everything out on time and not keep too many people waiting too long and get it all in, in order. I, f I find fascinating how you do that because it's a real juggling act, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. And again, it's one of those things that you get good with uh, practice, with time and uh, with uh, uh, a daily uh, immersion into this uh, type of activity. Uh, I have to also say that I'm as good as my team is. Uh, the team that I picked and the team that I trained and I'm very lucky as to the fact that I have a few valuable assistants that, were, that have been with me since we opened the restaurant that I was able to uh, keep uh, by my side, which is in this town is somewhat a miracle because with everything that opens up and temptation is everywhere and everybody's out there looking for the next chef to open up their restaurant. So, um, you know, I didn't have to deal with a lot of turnover. Therefore, I was able to build, uh, you know, today over yesterday's accomplishments, even though we still are today as good as the meal we served yesterday. And, um, Okay, I lost my turn of thought. My turn right. of thought. <laughs> so let's talk about now. So let, so let's talk about food now, generally in Vegas, because I think for a long while it's been about the buffets. It's been about the ten dollar. Eat as much as you can. Fill yourself up and don't eat till the next day. And then they brought in all these new casinos and resorts like the Venetian, which is just exquisite five star hotels. And with that came guys like yourself. Were you nervous for a while coming to a place like Vegas that you might be considered just a buffet chef? Actually, no, because I had the advantage and the benefit of uh, somebody that was the first pioneer uh, to have come before we did and uh, cleared the way, basically, showed us the way, so that when we did come, uh, all we needed to do was show up and perform. And uh, it did take us some adjusting. It did take us, you know, to learn the curve. And, uh, but with... But you know, yeah, I, I would have to say it definitely we were helped immensely by the fact that the likes of Wolfram Park had already opened a spag of five years prior of us coming and showed us that there was a market ready for, uh, you know, serious dining in Las Vegas. And um, it is so funny that you mentioned it, you know, that Las Vegas used to be uh, the city of buffets, and it still is. But now, instead of five ninety nine, all you can eat, you know, you find the, the fifty dollar buffet, the sixty dollar buffet, the seventy dollar buffet, high end, all you can eat seafood and stuff like that. So you know, it's changed dramatically, uh, and it will change dramatically. You know, I think cyclic. Uh, there is a cycle, a five year cycle in this town, and uh, you know, we just hit one and uh, probably you know, in the next five years, the city will evolve into something else altogether. So with new stars coming, with new chefs coming in, uh, more chefs from, from, from the East Coast are coming in and uh, it's just gonna be so exciting to be uh, looking at what's gonna happen and even more exciting to actually living uh, and experiencing it uh, firsthand. I suppose what you're trying to do is offer variety because there are the buffets which are available for around ten dollars and then there are those that are slightly more expensive as you mentioned and then there are fine dining restaurants like this but of course the thing about vegas is you have people like me who are coming in spending ten dollars in in the casinos and you have other people who are spending 10 million in the casino so they they need to be catered for as well oh absolutely we actually uh, understood that very well from the beginning and uh, that's why here at Valentino, we actually have two restaurants in one. We have Valentino, which is fine dining, and then we have the Grill at Valentino, which is a more casual uh, restaurant for a more casual uh, diner uh, that might have only $10 to spend or whatsoever, because there are definitely more $10 diners than there are million dollar diners. And uh, knowing that was definitely an invaluable um, uh, lesson to us, and uh, it just, set us up you know on, uh, on the right path to begin with a good chef now seems to me to be a bit like a rock star really people will do anything to pay to eat in their restaurants certainly in the uk there's been an explosion of celebrity chefs uh, the great ones who are opening restaurants and and filling them you can't get a table and i know over here they'll fly you anywhere to go and work for them and i mean it must be an exciting time to be um regarded with respect now because i suppose for a time you were just cooks weren't you now to be a chef is something that's so desired Oh, tell me about it. I mean, I'm, I feel blessed. I feel uh, so lucky. 
now that I picked this profession 25 years ago and uh, considering the fact that at the time I had no idea not a clue what I was getting into you know I was 13 at the time so and uh, that I was actually primed to be in a certain position just when this boom was taking place it's like I said just just like winning the lottery is it your job to put the menus together and to come up with the ideas for each course and each each serving that comes out? Because, I mean, the food that I had on Monday night was really extraordinary. We had the uh, crab cakes to begin with, and then we had the uh, uh, panolis with the with the rabbit, which I'd not had before. I would have expected veal, but it worked so perfectly. How do you think of that? Well, um, usually I uh, take care of, uh, uh, you know, redesign the main a la carte menu and... Uh, uh, special events menu and stuff like that that carry a certain uh, um, a different meaning and then I have my sous chefs that I put in charge because that's the way it ought to be anyway into uh, to, I put them in charge to prepare and to design these menus and stuff like that and all I do is just review them and make sure that there is nothing truly out of you know the world we need to keep of course to, within uh, certain boundaries when it comes to identity and who we are and and what we serve and um, and again uh, when it comes to philosophy uh, in our kitchen you know we stick to definitely the Italian uh, fair because that's who we are that's what we that's where I'm from and that's what I've grew up cooking and eating and uh, but we obviously exploit all that we can find here ingredient wise so uh, you know if all of a sudden we have this beautiful fish that comes from Hawaii and you know, I never did it in Italy. What does that mean? That I can't cook it? So, you know, I'll cook it my way and, uh, you know, just use the simple uh, approach to, you know, uh, deal with an ingredient that is what Italian cooking is all about and try not to mess up the flavors. And, you know, if we keep it fresh and we keep it simple, it's a sure uh, recipe for success. Do you shop far and wide for your ingredients to, to your recipes? Because, I mean, I know that, that it is so vital. I mean, there are carrots and carrots, even down to basic vegetables, aren't there? That The taste can be so different. Do you work very hard on that? Well, uh, we are in the middle of the desert. There's no uh, produce market, so to speak, that I can get up at 5 a.m. to go shop at. Not that I would, even if there was one. <laughs> but and uh, nor is there a fish or a, or a meat market. And uh, what I use is, obviously, we moved just a short distance from Los Angeles where I lived for 15 years and developed certain relationships with the certain distributors. And those were our backbone uh, uh, suppliers to start with. But then again, we came here and uh, with the upcoming of, of uh, next day shipping and uh, overnight shipping, uh, and uh, all of a sudden we had uh, uh, these people calling us from everywhere, from Hawaii to Alaska to Florida to whatever. So we actually get seafood from all over the place. We get our uh, buffalo flown in directly from uh, North Dakota, directly from the rancher, you know. And again, we save money even though we have to pay uh, uh, an arm and a leg in shipping. So it's all about, uh, you know, seeing what's out there and the right product will find you because just like you said that uh, you've heard about us and so have they and of course they want their product to be sold in uh, in you know in certain establishments and uh, and that's basically how it works and uh, you know we've had uh, we've had a lot of fun in uh, exploring that for sure well, congratulations on the restaurant. It is beautiful to sit here and eat. The uh, cutlery and everything is just so perfectly picked. And your food, which is the main thing, is just beautiful. Um, I had a fantastic meal. Uh, and it really was tremendous. You, I mean, the work and effort that goes into good food is remarkable. And it's so easy just to go and have a buffet or something like that. But if you want a treat, come to this restaurant. Um, it's at the Venetian uh, Casino. It's called Valentino's. And Luciano Pellegrini is the... Uh, top man the chef and uh, a real star in the world of cooking and uh, we're really grateful to talk to you on the program thank you so much you're so welcome and my pleasure alex the alex belfield in conversation podcast with daisymedia.co.uk alex belfield